So we'll start off um, with our design concepts. So we're going to be looking at uh, when we're um, just in the uh, phase of looking at a new greenfield site or uh, which, which, re, which means a brand new uh, facility or location has been established or identified, or um, a brownfield site, which is where we have an, an existing facility, but we're going to be going in and uh, doing some demolition and putting in a brand new facility uh, within to a, uh, a building or plant that it currently exists. But either way, it is what, what we're, we're bringing in a brand new design, new assets, new ro robots, new material handling systems. So um, our simulation, what we're going to find out, definitely becomes the prototype for this new manufacturing facility. Often in, in design uh, concepts, we have the chance to actually have a prototype, to build a prototype before we start looking at a, a, a new pro product. And that design prototype very well could be even um, in uh, the computer terms or an actual physical prototype. But our simulation model, when we put our concept and our actual layout and processes into action with an animation and packed full of statistics and data, we're, that, that facility becomes alive in a sense and we can conduct in, uh, what if analysis and sensitivity analysis. And the final goal is to achieve our marketing targets um, um, and, and get and iron out all the changes or uh, that might re be required to, to achieve our targets prior to implementation. So in the design phase, um, this obviously is where engineers are going to bring bringing in different concepts, different layouts, and uh, we'll have uh, usually a set of targets. So uh, management might say that we need to come up with a facility that designs uh, 60 vehicles per hour, um, and we have this allocated budget. budget. Um, so we have X amount of dollars to work with, and this is the area, the targeted area uh, location in the, uh, in the uh, graphic location of where we're going to be uh, designing this facility. So now we need to, to prove out these concepts. Are we going to achieve our throughput? Um, do we know, are we going to design where the bottleneck uh, or, the, or the constraint is going to be in the system? Um, can we, do we know what line rates we're going to be running at different various lines within the uh, process? Um, the, what are the effects of the downtime in the system? Is it going to cause us to not achieve our throughput? What particular material handling systems are we going to be using? Are we going to be incorporating power and free, electric monorail systems, power friction systems, um, even the material handling from AGVs to forklift uh, to tugs and rack systems? These all are important facets of the uh, d design of the facility. And then uh, along the way, when we're putting in all these assets and lines, how do we uh, break up our synchronous behavior through decouplers and buffers? And when we're building subcomponents that have to meet key rendezvous within the uh, facility, where do we broadcast these points to build that particular subcomponent to assure that it's going to make a robust uh, rendezvous without causing any uh, lengthy uh, delays in the system? So these are all important design objectives. So now we can step into each one of the uh, uh, design objectives that are, are found within a typical simulation model. So obviously throughput um, really is the, is the uh, key metric um, when we're designing a new, particular any manufacturing facility. What is our, what is our throughput going to be? So the uh, plant uh, might have and management might say we, we need to achieve uh, at, at a minimum 68 jobs per hour or vehicles per hour in this facility. And this shows a, a runtime graph of throughput. And this very well could be placed in the X bar and R chart where we can see our control limits and we can see where the variation exists in uh, an hourly throughput factor. And we could determine what caused a, some of these points to go out of, out of control 
or achieve a low throughput, such as the, the point where we're looking at a, a jobs per hour that went below 36 jobs per hour. And we can see that these lines were, were set more than likely at a maximum line rate or a design rate of 73 jobs per hour. But the uh, net average is just above the 68 uh, target. So this very well could be uh, displaying that the, we are uh, achieving our, uh, our, our targeted throughput of the facility. But the, the key here is, the key takeaway is, is definitely um, our, our throughput is, the, uh, is the, usually the king metric when we are designing a facility. And as long as it can be implemented within the budget, that's where management is going to place uh, a lot of weight, whether or not we're going to achieve that throughput. So when we do have a new facility, we know that in manufacturing, bottlenecks can uh, come into the system. Um, they could actually move around the system. And usually we can pinpoint a particular constraint in the, in the overall process. So the constraint is the limiting factor. It's where, whatever throughput the, the constraint produces, this is going to be the throughput that's at the pay point of the facility. So it is the, uh, it's often referred to as the weakest link in the system. So can we actually design where the constraint can be placed? Sure we can. So we might want the design, the constraint to be at the near the end of the facility, or if it's such where it's a very complex um, process within the overall uh, layout, very well could be due to budgeting constraints and so on. It might be the constraint. So how do we go about protecting the constraint to make sure that it doesn't cause uh, or minimize the low runners of that constraint? So if we know where the, the design uh, or where the placement of the constraint, then we can provide protection around it. We might put some buffers in front of it or some buffers after it or some protective overspeed that are, is pushing parts into it. But we can design and place some techniques uh, to protect and minimize the negative effects of, a, of the constraint. Now, if we don't have any clue of where this constraint is going to be, then you can, uh, you can easily see that we could be placing assets and protection in the wrong place, and that could be detrimental to our overall budget and the uh, achieving our targets. Now, bottlenecks can actually be a little bit more towards the uh, second sector of what we talk about on operational procedures, because often bottlenecks can move around um, even from a weekly or monthly basis, or uh, e even within a day, uh, particular bottlenecks can occur. So we're going we're gonna to look at how we can, through when we go step into the operational procedures, how we can actually put some actions in place to minimize and protect uh, when bottlenecks occur within the system. So another, the, the, the next um, uh, important facet when we're designing a facility is obviously we're going to be stepping into the, the various line rates. We're going to have several lines and several stations and work cells that all need to work together. And they're going to have various line rates. They might not all have the exact same line rate. We might, that might just run a facility with all the facilities running at a 60 second uh, cycle time. Uh, we, we very well could want to ha have some of the upstream or lines pushing into the next uh, system. So designing, you know, look, exploring and looking at the possibility of providing protective capacity in the, uh, in the eyes of a push system. Um, so we can test these types of procedures out. We might want to uh, look at whether or not once we have various line rates uh, achieved and, and looking at a particular uh, run or what if analysis, look at what if in the future we need an extra jobs per hour. Can we get it with the current uh, design that's in place? So we might want to protect for future uh, market growth. And um, we also, very importantly, want to distinguish between manual operation and automated cycle times. We don't want our labor force to pace or drop or have losses in throughput due to shared resources or operators or uh, 
forklift operators. So looking at uh, the difference between manual and automated uh, cycle times. Um, and overall, we're going to, we're, again, we're looking at are these lines set up to meet our market demand? And have we sufficient protection to if the life cycle of this particular program is uh, three to four years and we project some uh, future growth, do we have uh, uh, this, does this plant uh, protect for future market demand? So setting up line rates, very key uh, to when we're coming to our design phase. Um, unfortunately, downtimes happen. So when, once we have these lines in place, we're going to experience uh, mean, mean time between failures and mean time to repairs. You know, particular just when a station goes down, we might have to bring that. We might have to lock out the entire line. So obviously, when downtimes occur, um, there's a great potential for overall throughput loss. And that could trickle down all the way to the pay point. So we might be, that could be one of the, the uh, low uh, points um, where we're looking at our throughput graph of when a particular hour has gone out of our uh, control limits. So the length of the, uh, of the repair, um, how often it occurs. Um, we, it, we might want to look at the number of maintenance resources we have so we can put in uh, our workforces such as um, millwrights and electricians, um, basically our maintenance crew, and we can actually even um, go as far as looking at the safety and lockout procedures. Like I had mentioned, if a particular station goes down, we can actually lock out the entire line. That could be uh, picking up the uh, when an a electrician comes out to a station and cuts off electricity for the entire line and then locks out. Um, for safety protocol and goes in. So these all obviously add time to the uh, amount of the overall repair. And nowadays backup systems are very costly. We're not seeing um, that as, as much as uh, we had in the, uh, in the past. So uh, we're looking at uh, uh, these robust and bringing our system back up um, as quickly as possible. So when we're uh, in the design concept, obviously moving material around uh, the facility from marketplace to line side racks, very important. Overall, the overall facility itself, the, 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 the actual vehicle that's getting built might be uh, placed on a palletized, within a palletized loop. And that pallet itself holds dimensional control information. So these pallets actually are expensive assets in themselves. A particular pallet might be uh, uh, near $20,000 with all its dimensional control to hold that particular uh, component and uh, vehicle in place so it can get welded uh, spot on where it needs to be. Um, so these in, in, in a, a facility we might have uh, near 300 pallets in the system. So that in itself is a multi-million dollar uh, question on how many pallets uh, reside in an overall facility. We might have um, particular power-free um, uh, conveyance systems that are delivering such uh, uh, body size or vehicle size to um, the overall um, body. Um, we'll, we'll definitely usually have forklifts that are delivering uh, material in tugs and carts. Um, all the way to automated guided vehicles. Again, um, different uh, systems that are delivering product from a marketplace all the way to um, some of the uh, line side racks where, where the um, components are getting um, installed or assembled. So this is just an example of a uh, power and free system. So in, in this uh, particular example, we're showing the overall, it's an engine line. We're showing the overall main line where the vehicles are traveling down. And meanwhile, we have the subcomponent of the engine getting built up. And we have a power and free system. This is the loaded side, so the engines get loaded on a power and free. You can see that this, this represents an overhead power and free where the engines are, are hanging above the vehicles. And then they're going to get loaded at this particular point. And then we'll see our empty uh, carrier return. So we can, this could be nested within the overall uh, manufacturing facility, or we might just hone in on this particular uh, system and dial in 
the number of carriers in the system, uh, how, uh, how long should the empty return side be, and uh, how long um, or how, how many engines are, are queuing up on the load side. And we can look at the overall system throughput, the jobs per hour. So very important as far as uh, capturing uh, various material handling systems. We can actually set this in motion here. And we can see that the engines are queuing up. And they're getting loaded at this particular point here. And our empty uh, pallets are returning. And, and we can compare the overall throughput on this engine line to the overall throughput on the main line or the cycle with respect to cycle times. And finally, looking at when we're designing system, obviously buffers and decouplers are very uh, key to the overall design. So when we put our, um, all our stations together and we make up groupings for, for lines, when stations go push into each other, we pick up synchronous behavior. Each one of these stations have its, its own uh, respective availability. And when we start to multiply all these availabilities together, to get an overall availability for a line, we can see that it doesn't take long before the overall availability um, starts to become uh, an issue, a potential issue. This is where we break up some of these the synchronous behavior through decouplers or buffers. And they could be just um, anywhere to uh, two to eight units, and that might be sufficient um, to break up some of the uh, synchronous downtime behavior. So very key to when we're designing facilities. And also broadcast, it's a separate topic, but when we are building uh, subcomponents, when do we want to broadcast to a, the subcomponent to build that particular uh, subcomponent? So the timing um, usually takes place where it needs sufficient time to actually build the component, get it into the material handling system, such as par and free, and assure that it's going to make that rendezvous at that assembly point uh, in time. And then sequence becomes important because when you make a broadcast further uh, downstream, obviously there's greater chance of the sequence to get, the, the mainline sequence to get out of sequence or to have a late unit. So broadcast points, very key uh, to the design. They can be very, become com uh, complex and, and uh, very debatable because of the uh, differences and it's obviously more robust to sequence the earlier the, the uh, or I should say the closer to the actually sub assembly and, and it's more robust uh, due to ha achieving that the, the, the sub component will be there the further downstream. In this example we have it such where we're sending the broadcast point early in the system here. So we're, this, is, this represents where we send the broadcast. This is the subcomponent right here. This, this represents a body side. And we're actually receiving the signal. So this information says it's, it's this type of vehicle. It might be a vehicle type 1 or a vehicle type 2 or a vehicle type 3. And it's going to get build that respective vehicle type, place it into the power and free system. So we see that this is the loaded uh, body side or vehicle side that's traveling to a particular point or rendezvous point where it's going to meet the main line and, and take that sub-assembly. And then the empty carrier returns on the empty re uh, return side. Now with respect to sequence, if this, we can see that this was sent um, early on, that, that gives us a better chance for the body sides to actually queue up and be, be present. So and, but we have a greater chance of the sequence uh, possibly getting uh, out of order if one of these vehicles went through a re repair spur or a parallel line and got out of sequence, then we could have a potential issue. So often the broadcast point, if it's closer to the actual build, you have less opportunity for the, the, the uh, overall sequence to get um, to stay um, within sequence. So uh, very key uh, to design uh, concepts.